range of species, and you'll see uh, what are the species we're working on. Uh, you can also, I know in fact we are employing microarray. They'll not really give you some of the data, maybe <laughs> Dr. Ravinder is already covering all this. You know, I'll not really uh, you know, cover you know, what you are doing. Uh, but this is another powerful technology, uh, you know, uh, which is uh, being utilized extensively to identify genes which are differential expressing. Uh, in a single class ride, you can have thousands of genes, you know, 50,000 genes and one lakh genes all put there in one class ride. And then, you know, uh, you can have RNA isolated from different tissues and then converted to cDNA. And when you are converting to cDNA, you can label them with different dyes and then, you know, mix them and then hybridize. For instance, you can have a green dye, you can have a red dye and mix them and hybridize with this. So what you have is this is reverse of southern, all the probes are all uh, bound here on a solid support that is glass light and all these RNAs which you are collecting and you are hybridizing, they are the target tissues. Unlike southern, in case of southern you have on the, in the solid support all the unknown sequences and you are hybridizing with a probe, uh, which is just one probe. But here you have thousands of probes uh, on, the, on a single glass light and uh, you, know, you are hybridizing. And uh, all those uh, you know, which are giving you red signal, they are the genes which are expressing only in this tissue. And those which are giving only green signal, signal they are the genes which are expressing only in this tissue. And then uh, the yellow ones, which are, the, for instance, this one is the yellow, and the yellow ones are the ones which are expressing in both the tissues. And that could be a degree of uh, difference, uh, you know, or the not exactly only expressing here or here. That could be level of expression different between these two tissues. And that will give you a different grade of this yellowness or uh, you know, redness or greenness. And based on that, uh, if you have that you know, laser scanning system, it will capture different uh, colors and then put that uh, together and give you some results and telling what are the genes which are showing uh, specific expression. And you can have, in fact, we have utilized this in case of rice, uh, and particularly because these arrays are available and they have been put to use and uh, hundreds of genes have been identified which are drought responsive in different germplasm lines and also salt responsive, cold responsive, and then submergence responsive, acidic responsive, an array of, uh, you know, kind of traits which are uh, targeted in this particular case. And uh, similarly, Arabopsis chips are being utilized in case of brassicas. I'm not really going to present all that data, huge amount of data. Just to briefly mention, in, in brassicas, we have used Arabopsis chips because the chips are not available in brassicas. You know, just now they have uh, become available. So we have uh, used them. Uh, we have used them to, uh, you know, identify genes which are showing differential expression in case of brassicas. Uh, again, on the trout, uh, you know, uh, what are the genes which are expressing very specifically? Uh, but then, you know, uh, when you handle uh, this kind of thousands of genes and all that, you require bioinformatics for planning a particular experiment. The design of experiment is very important. And uh, once you extract data for analysis, also required bioinformatics. Elaborate support actually is required, and uh, very often you know our uh, results uh, don't get published uh, properly because we don't really analyze them properly, and this requires an enormous amount of effort to really understand the data itself. You know, or, you know what are the genes and how they behave. So, <clears throat> and this is uh, what I was talking about that uh, you know we are currently using uh, massively parallel sequencing. This is the next generation sequencing platform of uh, Illumina uh, Solexa platform which we are using. Uh, to you know, uh, identify genes which are showing differential expression and the process cloning genes. Uh, in this case, uh, the advantage here is uh, that there are a few advantages rather. Uh, the first and uh, foremost is that in the species where no information, prior information is available. Say I was talking about rice, I was talking about arabidopsis, where the sequencing is done, where uh, you know lakhs and lakhs of cDNA sequences are available, so you can design oligonucleotides and uh, synthesize those uh, you know probes and put onto a single glass line to carry out microarray uh, you know, expression studies. But in species like camel, like goat, practically no information is available. So if you want to work on species or some spe fish species where there is absolutely no information available, how to really prospect genes or even new alleles? How do you really do that? So to do that, you can employ this particular technique, and also you can employ suppression subtractive hybridization. But suppression subtractive hybridization doesn't really capture genes which are expressing at a very, very low level. But this is the technology which can capture the genes even expressing at a single molecule level. You know, you can amplify them because that is a step of amplification. This is the first step. So what you do is you can ligate some linked sequences on either side of your cDNA that you synthesize. You isolate all the messenger RNA or RNA species and then you can ligate that, convert that to cDNA and the ligate linker sequences. And those linker sequences at the end are also complemented to the 
probes which are already on a kind of solid support and uh, there could be beads, uh, you know, there could be other solid supports and uh, they are synthesized and they are synthesized by the company that is the Illumina uh, you know, synthesizes and then they get ligated. And again, there are uh, these uh, both three sites, you have those adapters, so there will be a ligation. And the process, you can go for synthesis of the complementary DNA. And you can have the uh, primer sequences there, and then the complementary sequence will be synthesized. And this is called breed specia. Breed specia, because those, both the complementary you know, adapter sequences will be there in the vicinity, and uh, they form uh, you know, uh, uh, bridges like this. Uh, and the process you can have bridge PCR and in the process you can synthesize a cluster because after synthesis you can you know, excite one end by using a particular enzyme. So one end is excited and they are all linear now and this is one cluster and one cluster will be corresponding to just one transcript. One cluster is corresponding to just one transcript and millions of such clusters are created. Millions of such clusters are created by PCR. And uh, obviously, you are targeting messenger RNA, converting that to CDNA, and you're binding those there, hooking those to the adapter sequence, complemented adapter sequences, and then making those clusters. And then, each one of them would be now sequenced. And here, the sequencing strategy is such that obviously, you have to, because the sequences these ends are known, so you will be using primers. And the three prime end would be extended by <coughs> DNA polymerase. And in this case, you use also DNA polymerase. But when you are using those uh, you know, nucleotides, the three prime ends are modified. They are protected there. So it will not be once one particular nucleotide is uh, you know, incorporated, this is not dideoxy like Sanger's method. They are not dideoxy. So they are, the, the, the synthesis completely stops. But in this case, what is there is the three prime OH is modified. So it will not be extended. So after incorporation, because of a particular color of the nucleotide, you have four different nucleotides, there will be four different colors. And which nucleotide getting incorporated you can capture by lasers. So you first capture that. Then you remove the three prime block, OH block, and then extend it by next stage. So you continue, the, you continue like this. So I repeat this. So you have uh, you know kind of a similar synthesis as it happens in case of Sanders method, but you don't use dideoxy nucleotide here. You use you know nucleotides which are blocked by the three prime OH. And that block can be removed after the, uh, the nucleotide is incorporated and also captured by laser detection systems. Uh, and then you remove the block and then get it extended. So the second nucleotide again, when it gets incorporated, you can also detect that, uh, you know, depending on the color, what is getting incorporated. Then again, remove the block and then keep extending like that. that. So that's what is done here. And every time the nucleotide gets incorporated, so that is getting captured. And that is done for each, because uh, there is homogeneity here in within particular cluster, the same nucleotide will be getting incorporated. So you will have a you know, kind of signal for a particular spot. You can see for a particular spot, spot is this particular cluster. So you can capture that and then at a particular, it will be happening in real time. Other than when the nucleotide is getting incorporated, so you have capture, capture of that particular signal, and then you know what nucleotide is got incorporated. And then it goes to the next nucleotide. So, and, uh, and in, 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 in contrast to the Sanders method, as I said, you know, millions of reads you generate, millions of reads you generate. But in contrast to that, it is a short read. Sanders method gives you about 300 to 500 nucleotide long sequence, but this will be giving you about 70 to 75 long nucleotide long sequence at a go. So, uh, but then the, the, pro, the, uh, the procedure has been modified, you can go up to say, uh, 100, uh, 150 nucleotide uh, on either side, 75 one side, 75 other side, they are called mid pair uh, or paired in, so different uh, reactions are there. So you can synthesize this. And this is, as I said, that detects, uh, you know, uh, the, the expression that takes place even for the molecules, at the single molecule level, the expression taking place for a gene, so you can capture this. That's the big advantage of this. The second is that all that, you know, sequences that you determine, not only you are just knowing what is expressing, you are also knowing the sequence. So by sequence you are counting them. So you know that this sequence is matching with this particular gene and this is uh, this many times it has been captured. So that is how you determine you know, how often a particular transcript has been fed. So this is a kind of powerful technology and it is very commonly being utilized now to identify genes which are showing differential expression in different tissues and developmental stages and different environmental stimuli uh, you, know, you can identify. Uh, this is uh, briefly the, uh, the insertion mute analysis which we are using. Particularly in this project, we are using this uh, in microbes. In, uh, you know, because you have uh, a microbial platform where uh, you, know, you have to isolate genes. Diverse microbes, of course. 
And uh, you know, although you know, uh, in, in plant system, you know, people are working in India itself and outside, people are using TDA insertion, transposon insertion, and then uh, you know, retro transposon insertion lines, wise routines, cross back genes. Uh, but uh, this particular strategy we are employing uh, to isolate genes from microbial systems. Sir, I'm a lecturer, I'll take call you back. Uh, so, uh, so what is done is that if you have the gene plant gene here with its promoter, you can insert a foreign element like tDNA, transposon, retrotransposon, and uh, you know the sequence. From this sequence, you can move to the gene. Once you have this uh, mutation of the gene, you have a mutant phenotype, and from that uh, mutated plant, you can isolate DNA, digest with a particular restriction enzyme which doesn't digest in this particular, at least in this particular, you know, uh, transposon or retrotransposon or tDNA. And then after digestion, you can circularize. And after circularization, you can go for inverse polymerase chain reaction. And for instance, this is a gene that doesn't have insert, and if this is uh, having an insert, and you can have primers which are uh, you know oriented in opposite direction for a circular molecule, and you can see you know by you know on this particular you know prime pair of primers you can amplify this flanking sequence. I know this uh, these are the flanking sequences, and these flanking sequences are actually the gene sequence. So gene uh, which is inactivated is the gene sequence on either side, and from this sequence you can walk into this. In fact, there are genome walker kits. You know, alternatively, you can employ those and uh, walk into the flanking sequences. Uh, also, you can, uh, instead of uh, this, you can go for simple PCR. You can, after restriction digestion, you can go for ligation of two different adapters or linkers on either side. And then from those uh, linker sequences, you know, you can, you know, corresponding to those, you can have primers and walk into an amp PCR amplify the uh, you know, sequence of the gene, and then you know, go for sequencing. And then that uh, sequence can be utilized to screen the CDNA library from the normal you know, stock. In the process, you can clone the genes. Uh, this is another powerful method of uh, you know approach to clone or prospect genes uh, from diverse resources, provided you have created the insertional you know stocks. In fact, insertional uh, muted, mutagenized stocks. Uh, the, the the last approach of uh, prospecting genes uh, is uh, to use of uh, molecular linkage maps. And uh, they start with that uh, if you have a pair of markers and your gene is uh, located somewhere here, then you can clone these genes. And this is called chromosome landing. And you'll see in the next slide, and this is more explicit there. Uh, what is indicated here is that these uh, you know horizontal bars are artificial chromosome clones. And in this case, uh, bacterial artificial chromosome clones, uh, you know, which were utilized in case of rice to sequence genome, and uh, Dr. Selvi utilized them in case of sugarcane to isolate the rust resistant gene in case of sugarcane. And uh, in tomato, we have utilized again to, to you know, map uh, the physical, construct physical map of the tomato genome. Uh, and then, uh, you, know, you can see, if you have these two markers, this is a genetic map. And uh, you can construct genetic maps. If you have large number of markers, you can have very high density genetic map. And also, by using these markers, you can also localize the gene of your interest to a marker internal. At the same time, if you have this large fragment DNA libraries or artificial chromosome clones, you can, see, you can screen the library using these markers. And when you suppose, so when you use these uh, markers in, to screen the library, you identify this particular clone. And this uh, red one is the clone which hybridizes both the markers. So that means you have landed on a particular artificial chromosome clone. And if you happen to map your gene here in between these two markers, that means you have landed on a particular artificial chromosome clone which carries the gene of your interest. Why? Because your gene is located in between these two markers in this particular interval. And these two markers are hybridizing with this particular artificial chromosome clone. That means this must carry the gene of your interest. In other words, you have landed on a particular chromosome, artificial chromosome clone, which carries the gene of the interest. That's called chromosome landing. In fact, the fast gene which is cloned from tomato, uh, by using this strategy, that was way back in 1993, that is the gene called PTO, pseudomonas resistant gene in case of tomato, that was uh, isolated by this particular approach called chromosome line. And today, in case of rice, routinely this particular approach is being utilized uh, to prospect genes from the germplasm. In germplasm, we have many genes, we have not been able to understand them, how they function, but this is one of the approaches which can be employed. And you can see here that this is uh, the gene and this is the marker. And in between this marker, we have the gene here, and this is the artificial chromosome clone. So you have landed on a single artificial chromosome clone to identify the gene. You can follow others, and subsequent to this, you can follow the strategies. 
And this is one of the strategies which is followed to ICM with the gene. This is actually for them going into it and landing on the gene itself. This is actually gene landing, landing on the gene itself. And how really did they land on the gene? And this is one of the examples of landing on the gene. And uh, you can see this is uh, a germplasm line, which is a very uh, kind of robust, long and wide grains. And you can see the test weight, 42 uh, grams. And uh, on contrast to that, you have one which is about 18 grams test weight. So huge difference between grain size. This is a quantitative trait. And all abiotic stresses, you know, they are controlled by many genes. They are very complex and they have very complex inheritance. Very difficult to really, uh, you know, target. You know, even far more complex than, you know, grain size variation that you see in data. And if you want to really target those complex traits, so obviously transcriptome profiling is one of the approach and uh, you have to really go down by a lot of bioinformatic analysis to the genes which will be influencing the traits. Otherwise, you can follow this kind of approach, but then this requires enormous amount of effort in terms of construction of map, fine mapping of the gene, and then further cloning and functionally validating the gene of interest. So quite a bit of effort, and you can see here, uh, first of all, the gene was localized. This is called quantitative trait loci. The loci which influence the expression of quantitative traits are called quantitative trait <coughs> loci. And this is one of the important quantitative trait loci uh, uh, influencing seed size in case of rice. And first of all, it was localized to a marker interval on chromosome 2. And this is, uh, this is one of the you know, approaches. And you can see, by further analysis of the recombinants, and this gene could be isolated. By further analyzing this recombinants, you can see between these two recombinants, uh, which are of a uh, large grain size, you can see the grain size phenotype in here. And uh, what is common in these three, if you com consider these three recombinants, is this particular segment and this segment. And all three are giving you high grain size large grain size and they have only this particular segment in common and that carries only one gene that is g -double. So by fine mapping you can narrow down to the only gene of interest by genetic means. If you have markers you can land on the uh, gene itself and if you have a genome sequence you don't require artificial chromosome libraries. If you don't have gene, the genome sequences and most often you find you know, genome sequences are not available in many species you are working. So you can create an artificial chromosome library and land on the artificial chromosome and subsequently clone the gene from the artificial chromosome. But if you have the genome sequence available and you have uh, you know, this kind of recombinants available with you from a large population, you can see well, how many individuals they have used, 6,013 individuals. And uh, they could land on the gene itself and you can see you know, nothing was understood how this grain size is behaving in terms of at the molecular level and how the genes function, you can see. You know, this is a gene having a ring domain and uh, this is a ubiquitin ligase uh, protein and which is encoded by this particular gene. And you can see a particular deletion in this particular exon of the gene makes all the difference. And uh, normally this, uh, you know, when it is a small grain size, uh, the, the protein is 425 amino acid long and it gives you small grain size. And why? Because the ubiquitin ligase is functional here. And ubiquitin ligase is involved in cell division process. Because ubiquitination of protein, if protein is ubiquitinated, it goes to the degradation pathway, so the proteasome pathway gets degraded. And if you, if you do not have the ubiquitination and for a long time, so the protein will be there and it will help in repeated cell division and increasing the size in the process. And that's what exactly happened. And if you have deletion, then you have uh, a, a protein which is 310 amino acid long. And uh, as a result, you have uh, you know, uh, ubiquitination uh, not taking place. You have the protein available there, like cycling, for instance. And then you have repeated cell division taking place. And as a result, you have more you know, grain size. And uh, cell number increases, and you have more grain size. So you can see what happens in evolution and what happens at molecular level. Uh, particularly, you can explain the quantitative variation, quantitative trait variation. And the, 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 the abiotic stress tolerance are far more complex, as I said, and you have many different pathways, many different QTLs in the process, involved in the process, and you can identify them and then you know, clone them and more importantly understand the process. And that's what has been done actually. You know, several loci, for instance, salt tolerance loci, SKC1, for instance, have been identified. And you all know I really mine. You can, I know you know mine, <laughs> you know, mining of uh, natural resources, petroleum and all that. And uh, you know the alleles, the famous drosophila, you know, eye color, uh, you know, multiple alleles, a beautiful eye color. And so also in the human, you know, we praise Aishwarya Rai because of beauty.